Welcome back to another one, guys. This time, we're going to be taking a little bit of a deeper dive into the Easy Flash Omega. First, we're going to go in, we're going to update the firmware with a custom kernel. Next, we're going to go in and add image icons for all the Game Boy Advance ROMs. Finally, after that, we're going to add all the ROMs that I possibly can to it, and then we're going to take a long look at each one of the different emulators. That way we can figure out which ones do what well and which ones do what very, very not well. So, first, you just want to pop the memory card out of that Easy Flash Omega. Find your favorite standard generic memory card reader. Pop it in there. And really, you could use almost anything. I mean, a few times I've used an old Blackberry that took a micro SD, popped it in there, took the SIM card out, plugged in the computer. We're pretty good. Anyway, let's take this, pop it in the computer, and get rolling. Right. All right. We've got our memory card in the computer. We've got our file open that had our downloads from that awesome website. Now, open that README because it says very point blank, there's a light and dark theme, and you need to actually pick which one you want, get it out of that file, and rename it just easykernel.bin. Once you've made that choice, copy the bin file over there, and then copy over those other two files on top. You want to replace any files with the same name in the destination. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and eject the disk and get it ready to get put back in the Game Boy. Right. Eject the disk. Okay. I can do that. Haven't in a while, but whatever. Right. Here's our Easy Flash Omega Disk. We just we just need to figure out how to get it in that tiny little cartridge. Right. Uh Nah, let's just use the memory card instead. Okay, now simply just pop the memory card back in, pop it in the Game Boy, and then we need to tell the Game Boy that we intend on updating the firmware on this cartridge. And the way that it works on this little Easy Flash is you pop the cartridge in, and as you turn it on, hold left and right down the whole boot sequence. Continue to hold it down, then you ought to see Easy Flash's boot screen, and then you'll be greeted with the update mode. Now, it's going to automatically just install that kernel. There's not really anything else that we need to do. We're just going to kick it and wait for it to go ahead and boot all the way. Then we can take a look at what the new kernel actually looks like. And bam, it'll boot by itself and present us with its file system. Just like before. Except you may notice it looks a little bit darker. In my instance, if you use the light theme, that's cool too. It'll look a little lighter. Right, so we've got the firmware installed. Now you're going to need to put your disk back into the computer, and we're going to put some actual ROMs on it. Okay, you got your memory card plugged back into the computer. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to explore into this images folder to show you what they are. They're just really, really tiny thumbnails. Anyway, we're going to copy that right to the root of your memory card. No other setup required. And now I've got this nice little collection of ROMs I'm going to go ahead and put on there. That way we will have our complete file system and we'll have our system completely filled with ROMs pretty much. All the ones that I would ever realistically want to put on there anyway. All right. Let's go ahead and eject the disk again, get it back in the cartridge, and boot that Game Boy back up. Look at all the consoles this thing is able to emulate. Okay, 
now that we've got our memory card installed again, let's just go ahead and boot her up. Okay. Now we're just gonna start running random ROMs and random emulators. Let's get a feel for this thing real quick. NES emulation is exactly like it was in the, the other firmware, so there's not really anything new to show off there. Okay, yeah, let's take a look at ColecoVision. It's not really a system I literally ever played in my life, but I've seen a couple of them at, like, friend's grandma's house and stuff. You know, whatever. Okay, well, it loaded up. It's full screen. Resolution looks pretty good. Scaling doesn't look out of hand. It's moving pretty good. Now, since I don't have any experience with a ColecoVision, I can't tell how good of an experience this is, but it's running just fine. I wouldn't have a problem picking this up and playing ColecoVision games at all. There are quite a few settings to dive into, though. But I would imagine as simple as the ColecoVision is, you're probably not ever really going to go in there and change anything anyway. Next. Just for the sake of a deep dive, let's run a NES game. I know y'all want it. Alright, Excite Bike. Now, I kind of respect the way that this emulator scales this image. It looks good. You can run it like normal resolution, but you'll have a lot of the image hanging off the screen. But when it compresses it like this, it's kind of still perfect. And as you can see, that simulation is just as expected. I would expect nothing less than perfection on a console that actually had real NES games released for it in the first place. So, just as expected here, really. There's a few options to change. You can go in and load and save states. And you can tinker around with a few things if you feel like, but most things you'll probably never dive into. Okay, next, how about we get into Sega? Alex Kidd's one of those games that I really wish caught on more than it did. The colors just slap you right in the face. It's really cool. But, you know, then I start playing and I remember. Anyway, Sega's also just as perfect as expected. I don't really ever run into any hiccups or anything like that. Again, it's scaling the screen good. The audio sounds good. And you'll start noticing you've got just about the same or very similar amounts of settings in all of these emulators. None of them really have anything amazing on them. They're very, very basic. And that's exactly why they run well on this device. So, let's take a look at Blazing Lasers. Hudson Soft. Boots up just fine. And you'll notice most of these emulators really do do a fantastic job whenever you, you keep in your mind what it's actually running on. We're asking a Game Boy Advance to handle running all of these consoles. It's really kind of amazing. Again, similar set type of settings. But something about the TurboGrafx-16, something about the colors and the fluidity of the motion, I thought it was amazing. And again, we're just jamming. Not running into any issues, really. Not really having any problems with anything. No worries. Just games. And on a side note, I've tried to figure out if any of these consoles require any more power than the others. You know what I mean? Like, would NES last longer than playing Game Boy Advance on it? Or would TurboGrafx-16 last longer than Game Boy Color? And if there is a difference, it's minuscule. 
Okay. Now, I'm gonna diss on the Game Boy emulator a little bit. Because if you have any real Game Boy games and you put them into a Game Boy Advance, you've literally, since day one, always had the option to scale the screen full screen. Now, I'm normally against this, like if I'm playing one of my NES ROMs on the living room TV, then I'll run it 4-3. But this is not only got the sides cut off, but there's also top and bottom. It's only running the pixels that it would on a regular Game Boy screen. And it just makes me not even want to run it. Now, it does apply some Super Game Boy uh, borders to some of the games that actually had those built into it, but it's not enough, man. You should be able to scale the screen on this thing, and it's it's the biggest drawback of any of the emulators on this device. But it does run the games perfectly fine. You can go in, you can change your color palettes, you can make custom color palettes, and it honestly runs Game Boy and Game Boy Color games just as you would expect it except it's just that tiny little screen it reminds me a lot of if you could picture like a Game Boy micro screen but almost portrait instead of landscape it's just almost borderline too small but the emulation quality is borderline perfect along with the audio if you uh, put actual headphones in it it sounds better than if I was to just pop Link's Awakening into my old Game Boy and put headphones in so that's kinda cool too you can tell it whether you prefer Super Game Boy or Game Boy or Game Boy Color or a Game Boy Advance for games say like Oracle of Ages or Oracle of Seasons that if it knew that you were playing on a Game Boy Advance, there were extra areas that would open up. So you can still do that too. So games that have that ability still function perfectly also. Okay, let's look at our actual Game Boy ROMs. We've got some of our thumbnails. Some of them don't work. It's a little bit touchy on the way that the file names are named. I haven't actually changed any of mine from whatever source I got them from. And it works on almost all of them and again if your purpose of this device is just to cram a bunch of Game Boy Advance games on it then this thing's literally perfect everything about its Game Boy Advance game running abilities is perfect now I did have the old firmware crash a couple of times and it was super duper random it didn't really correlate with anything. But when it did, it would corrupt the entire file system of the whole Easy Flash, and it wouldn't boot anymore. That's whenever the final straw broke the camel's back, if you will. That's when I really took a look at adding another type of firmware onto this device. And there's people out there, like the guys over at GBATemp.net, that posted this firmware that are doing great work. Honestly, I don't understand how the companies that create these devices don't hire these people on. It would be a really smart move. But as you can see, Game Boy Advance, perfect, smooth. This is also a game that I really wish I'd have known existed whenever I was a kid because it had been the sickest thing ever. Okay, so we've really had nothing but successes so far other than Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulation is the exact same. I was really hoping for the ability to stretch that screen. Let's take a look at Game Gear real quick. Okay, it's pixel aspect ratio right now. Pixel perfect, rather. Yeah. Perfect. 
Ooh, yes, please. Perfect. Now, if this is so easy on the Game Gear emulator, I don't get why it's such an impossibility on the Game Boy Color one. Again, considering this thing could do it automatically the entire time anyway. But, that's neither here nor there. This emulator, I'm actually surprised with. It has a couple of options we don't have on a couple of the other portable emulators, portable system emulators that this thing runs. Okay, so we'll chalk that up to another win. Yeah, let's go ahead and do Neo Geo. Neo Geo Pocket. Alright, it's doing one-to-one -one aspect on this one also, but I feel better about it. Now, and I know you guys are going to roast me in the comments about, why would you want to stretch it out? Well, this thing is a tiny screen, man. That's all it has to do with. <laughs> if it was on a bigger screen, it'd be 4.3. But this screen, it's not like it's 16 by 9. Now, Neo Geo Pocket is a console that I really want to get a little further into. If any of y'all are familiar with a lot of old, like, emulating devices, I still have a GPX, or GP2X F100, and it always reminded me of the way a Neo Geo Pocket looked. And it always made me want one, because I was able to play some of the games on it too, but... Just never happened. So I'm glad I'm able to play some of these Neo Geo games on this Game Boy. Or am I? This emulator doesn't seem to run any of these Neo Geo Pocket games at anything close to a decent frame rate. It doesn't seem to matter what you go in there and change either. You can't really get full speed out of this emulator. The idea is kind of cool. I'm glad it exists. Maybe it will be full speed at some point. Maybe there's a few things I've overlooked because I didn't really spend that much time with it, but maybe it will get full speed at some point. But as of right now, this might be the only emulator that is completely pointless. You know what, I'm going to try to load up another ROM just in case that helps. Let's get Sonic running, just to see if another ROM might help out. Mm, does not look like it. Yeah, so Neo Geo Pocket is a no-go on this thing, as of right now at least. But it leaves the most interesting console for last. One that I'm sure all of us asked for. One that I'm sure all of us have played before. Maybe the most important thing it emulates at all. Let's go ahead and close this Sega emulator and go jump into that. None other than the Wonder Swan. Could not have any less of an idea about this thing. I know it's history, but I just can't read Japanese. Oh, okay. Wonder Swan doesn't seem to work anyway, so. Okay. No changes to the Game Boy Color emulator. Good, but nothing really added to it. We added a few consoles that do run very well, especially the Game Gear. I loved that Game Gear emulator. That was that was spot on. That was nice. We added all of these icons to our Game Boy Advance games, which is sick. Neo Geo doesn't work, which is sick. And Wonder Swan doesn't work, which is sick. Now, I don't know if that's me or the emulator. It's probably me, but hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for dropping by.